All right. Hey there, Kenneth. Thanks for sending in your onboard here from uh, from Button Willow and and uh, in Willow Springs. Uh, two great tracks. Glad you're having a good time out there. And, and yeah, certainly good luck your uh, your next time out at at Button Willow and uh, in, in not too long here. Uh, I'm gonna hop in and just jump into Button Willow first. Then I'll talk about Streets of Willow uh, right after. I think there's some good things that kind of translate from the Button Willow onboard into Streets of Willow that I definitely want to kind of parlay into each other. I think it'll be an, a, a good thing to to do these chronologically. So. Um, we're going to jump in here, kind of the big theme initially, just before we even get started. Um, I think a lot of the positioning things and working on steering, uh, steering rate is awesome. So, um, looks, you know, like some really great progress to me, kind of taking that step and moving to the next, uh, next thing I, I think on the docket is now going to be taking that, you know, extra positioning, extra load we have in the front tires and now starting to add entry speed in some corners. And I'll, and I'll touch on some ways to do that and kind of the best places I think to, uh, to do so in along with some smaller kind of track, you know, specific comments, uh, to get you more comfortable with button wheel your next time out there too. So, um, without further ado, let's jump on into it. We'll go turn by turn as usual and get started. So sunrise right off the bat. Um, thing I'll say here is, you know, now that we're kind of, now that we have our, our steering and positioning, uh, in a pretty good spot, I know there's some, some places you, you said you think you were overdoing the, uh, um, early turn in. Um, I'll, I'll touch on a few of those. I think for the most part, it looks pretty solid to me. Um, but now that we have that right now, we need to start thinking about corners as entry speed or exit speed. So, um, it helps to go through and, and kind of do a track map or exercise, just labeling each corner. Um, does this corner value entry speed or exit speed more? Um, we have some calls on it online. I can send over to you as well, but the, the, the bigger theme is just essentially saying, um, does this corner, do I spend more time uh, entering the corner and, and rolling speed into the apex? than I do on the exit or vice versa, right? If we have an exit that's a lot longer than our entry, so say for example here, sunset, um, definition of an exit speed corner, so way more time on this front straightaway than we do entering the turn itself. Something like sunrise, you know, even though there's a bit, you know, longer straightaway than the corner entry itself is a bit more obscure because there's not a huge run coming out of it that we really care, you know, quite so much about. It's also a really long um, entry corner, you know, there, there's just a wide entry phase. So. Um, you know, it's not a one to one comparison, but we can think about it that way. You know, does this exit matter a whole lot compared to the entry? So for um, for sunrise, I think we're pretty close doing a good job. But um, I think the the main thing here I, I would take a look at and touch on is just, you know, make sure we have our throttle application points set back a little bit further and then focus with focus on that goal of rolling in speed. So the way we do that, we either, um, you know, it, it's all in our braking and kind of how we how we adjust the. Uh, how we adjust the brake pedal coming into the corner. We can either we can either increase our entry speed in, in one of three ways. Um, the first is brake lighter. The second is brake less, and uh, the third one's brake for a shorter amount of time. So you know we're either braking uh, with with less pressure, we're getting off the brake sooner, um, or we're braking for a shorter period of time and then coasting into the corner from there on out. Um, whatever you know the, the kind of external factors that determine how we apply the brakes um, relate to our car and, and our, our balance you know we use the brake pedal as a tool for um, as a tool for our driving uh, and, and manipulating the car's balance more so than just using it as a tool to slow down so in a case like this i would say you know lighter pressure for longer duration into the corner uh, may be a good thing that might help us even push our brake zone back a little bit to get down to the apex just carrying the brake in a little bit as we need um, typically street cars have a bit of understeer built in from the factory. Uh, you know, as you start to do some more modifications, you might start to see it go more towards oversteer, depending on how you have it set up. Uh, but typically, um, that's going to be the, the main driving factor here is, you know, how, how much front weight can we transfer, um, on those tires? Do we need more, um, to get that entry speed up a little bit and having references is also a big thing. You know, we need to have our braking markers set correctly, uh, so then we can measurably take improvements lap after lap and just take a small chunk each time. Uh, doing so first and foremost in lower risk areas, Button Willow is pretty nice because there's plenty of runoff here. Um, doing so in, in those lower risk areas where we can get the confidence of what that car feels like at the limit. So second to that is, you know, having our slow point defined uh, in turn one, I'm getting on throttle fairly late because I want to take advantage of all that entry speed coming in. Um, so, you know, right about here is kind of where I start to accelerate off the corner, right when I can start to unwind my hands, right? So as soon as you can start to take take the steering wheel out and, uh, and, and start to accelerate, that's usually the good point. I think we're just on a little bit of maintenance throttle here for a little bit uh, in the corner before we start to unwind. Typically try to avoid that to reduce the understeer and, and the extra weight transfer rearward. That's going to be hurting our ability to, to roll more speed in and get, uh, get on throttle, get on full power sooner, I should say. Um, now, as we start to exit, whoops, as we start to exit, um, turn one here, I think track out looks good. 
uh, a ramp uh, into uh, into here. I think the entry is, is is definitely better. I think we can still delay that turn in a little bit here, um, just to get a slightly better angle coming in uh, into the corner. I think uh, the the early entry here is definitely not too bad, but just a slight bit more to get a slightly better angle of attack uh, coming in here. And secondly, I think if you just take a, a straight shot, so you can see, you know, we're kind of letting the car drift a bit further to the left hand side. Um, take a straight shot, put your left hand or right side tires and just kind of aim for that start of the curbing and just tr try to draw a straight line from the uh, initial curbing if you can. Uh, if you make that shot as straight as possible, you can break super, super deep into here uh, and carry a lot of weight on the front, which is going to help you throw a ton of speed into that little extra camber and compression um, where you can just crank on those front tires and get the car pivoted and turned in nicely. So the goal here is just to attack that first curbing uh, as straight as you can down to the apex. We want to be as, as, you know, um, kind of draw just draw an arrow into there and you can be braking super super deep utilize that extra compression and grip that the car is going to pick up there to help get the car turned in so um, that'll allow you to just you know really try to push the braking boundaries here um, we have that extra runoff if needed as well so this is definitely an area where i'd say it's a bit safe to play around with, the, uh, with some braking you can assume no cars in front as well um, i think the exit looks a lot better here love seeing the uh, the fact that you're staying a bit more inside uh, that's going to get you some more time and a nice drive off so really really like this exit um, awesome job there getting on power and getting the drive off the corner um, now cotton corners this is one where definitely that entry speed and exit speed uh, mindset comes into play and when we're thinking about you know all these corners that you know leading to one another all these s's up through here um, that's where we're going to want to roll in a lot of entry speed because there's really no exit coming out of each corner. You know, granted, we want to set up, uh, we want to set up for the next sequence as best as we can. So for example, through uh, the right hander here, we want to be making sure that we can stay to the right hand side, then cut back to the left to open up that corner uh, as much as we can. But with that, we want to be rolling in a lot of speed to each of these corners. So the best advice I can give is to think about, you know, accelerating past the apex and all of these or accelerate just past the curbing. So when we get in, I'm all also send over a, a good onboard. I think so one, one of my favorites for, for button willow. And when I studied back in the day for, uh, for a, a, a driver shootout, I was taking part in, um, with a Mercedes GT four car. Uh, but the, the driver there in that case, um, accelerates past the apex and all these, because the goal is to just roll in as much speed as possible through the entries where it's just a short burst of speed to the next corner. Um, letting the, letting the, the front tires get all that grip back with weight transfer. So you can cut back to the, uh, you know, after the right here, cut back to the left when you're off throttle, rolling in a bunch of speed, and then you only accelerate when you're kind of past that corner um, and starting to, to get into the next, you know, short straight or short burst before your, uh, your next turn. So coming into here, I think turning points actually really good. Um, love, love seeing the earlier transition into here. I know it seems a little counterintuitive. You're not opening up the corner quite as much, but you're rolling a lot more speed in that initial phase, which is what's important here. Um, and you're letting the tires get loaded a bit more progressively, which is helping them get that grip back too. I think your turning point's really good. Just on throttle, I know it's hard to hear um, over the Zoom call here, but just on throttle a uh, little early, just kind of right at that apex or right before the curbing starts um, or right before you get down to the uh, the geometric apex, I'll say, uh, where the curbing is. Um, this is the point where I would say, hey, this is where you should shoot for to, to be on throttle, just past that curbing, just past that apex. Um, you know, nice job getting a little burst of speed here into the uh, second curb. Same thing, I would just carry in the throttle a little bit longer, actually, uh, from that little burst, off throttle, let it rotate, boom, back on throttle, accelerating from here. Um, same thing over the top of the crest, you know, we do our, we, we do our lift fairly late, and let the car get settled, back on throttle, just past the apex, you know, that we can get that nice drive out. And Grapevine, honestly, a little bit of a same thing. I think Grapevine looks pretty good for the most part here. I wouldn't change too much. Uh, just that same philosophy, right? Kind of just accelerating just past the apex, um, taking advantage of the compression here in the curbing. I think you're doing a good job of that already. Um, so if anything, super, super slight adjustment, I wouldn't worry too much about Grapevine. I think it looks pretty solid. Um, and love the, uh, the exit, using lots of track. Um, awesome, awesome there. Now coming to the bus stop, I think the setup through these uh, uh, right and left handers are, are all fine here. Um, and then a little bit of the same thing, you know, the bus stop is a, this is a tricky corner and I, I think naturally it, it, it feels like it's more of an exit speed corner because we have a bit of a run into Riverside. Um, in reality, because of the curbing and kind of the awkward setup, it tends to be a bit more of that um, accelerate past the apex uh, type of corner, which thinks, you know, which makes you think it's a bit more entry speed. Um, just because you're rolling more speed in past the uh, the curbing here itself. Uh, something to play around with. I don't think there's a, a super right or wrong answer. I, I've seen this corner uh, taken a couple different ways. Seems to be a bit of a wash in terms of time here. 
Uh, I think you're getting in at a pretty good angle. We might be in a slight bit early here compared to uh, uh, before a little bit. Um, with the curb usage, I think it's definitely something where uh, it's it's play around with it a little bit, whatever's comfortable for you and your car. Um, all cars are different with how they handle these curbs. Uh, if you can take it, great. Seems like it's doing a pretty good job here. Uh, just be aware when you get on throttle, you know, it's going to be a little unsettled for a brief moment. I think you're doing a good job of navigating that already. So, um, you know, only slight stuff for the bus stop. Maybe we can roll in a bit more speed uh, by being a bit lighter on the brake pedal and being, you know, a bit more deliberate with our, our, our throttle application just past that apex. But I think it's overall um, a, a good corner as well. Now, Riverside, slight adjustment here, just in terms of how we think about the corner, how we drive it. I would get those left-hand tires down to the inside pretty early, kind of aiming for where this little rubber is. And you can see where people kind of get their tires in the little ditch and carve out a bit of room in that dirt. Uh, just getting in a little bit early, um, you're going to find there's actually a good bit of grip on the inside because of that camber and how the track gets uh, nicely kind of tapered downwards into here. Um, the more speed you roll in, the more you'll pick up some understeer through the middle part, which will then push you out a bit wider like you are right here. Um, if we get in just those couple inches to the inside a little bit earlier, we'll have a bit more grip initially um, so we can carry in the throttle a bit deeper, let the car drift out naturally through here, and then you can get back down to that apex kind of as you normally would. Um, modulating throttle here is super important. Uh, the most important part of, uh, of Riverside is getting that good exit kind of past this uh, you know, a little bit of curbing here, just as we get into, you can see there's a little bit of compression that builds up, you know, even all these slight changes in, in track uh, geometry and, uh, and how the, uh, the elevation is, is moving um, can make big differences in terms of lap time, how we take advantage of it. So even this little bit of camber angle that we see uh, coming down to the bottom of the track, being down here next to this curb, as, as kind of close as we can get is going to help you get as much grip on those tires as you can, which is going to help get that nice drive out uh, on power. It'll help reduce that understeer from the front um, and throw more weight to the rear so you can get that traction if traction is a, a concern here too sometimes. So just being in a little bit earlier, I know it's not a huge adjustment, you know, just a couple inches more to the inside if you can get there, uh, but aiming for a little section on track that has that bit of cutout going to help you just get some more front grip here too. Now as we move on down to Phil Hill, um, I think setup's fine, you know how we work through here, get nice and back to the uh, left hand side, fantastic. Um, all track positioning looks great. Love that we're turning in early here. Um, this is a, a great line uh, coming into the corner. So excellent, excellent job. Only thing here, much like uh, the cotton corners, accelerating past that apex is going to be the uh, the key thing. Um, I know it's a little bit tricky because you know we still want that nice, good exit. But if you're trying to accelerate over the top of the hill, um, we really can't go anywhere, right? We can't start to to take out steering until we're coming down just past the crest. Um, right about, you know, just as soon as you come back over the top of the hill, uh, we can start to add throttle because the rear tires are, are you know, they're, they're up in the air for a brief moment and they start to settle, 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 finally can grip up. We're rolling on the throttle during that time as they start to add traction, as they start to, uh, to get back to the ground. So um, deliberate throttle application just after the, uh, the top of the crest there, going to help just roll more speed in because, you know, we're, we're getting that throttle, that slow point correct. Uh, if we're a little bit early, it's going to kind of artificially inflate our min speed. And it's going to, even though we can roll more speed in, it's going to make it seem like we're at that limit a bit earlier and also hurt our exit a bit too. So just being on throttle a little bit later there, also going to be help, uh, going to help out a bunch. And it'll make this, this run out of here uh, a lot nicer too, while also helping entry speed. So just a slight adjustment there, um, pushing things uh, back on power. Um, but love the line choice. Love that we're turning in earlier there. Awesome, awesome job. All right, now coming on down into the sweeper. Um, super awkward corner. Definitely my least favorite at Button Willow, uh, just because it's so hard to get right. I think entry looks pretty solid into here. You know, we're rolling some good speed. The middle part here is always super tough because you're trying to manage getting on throttle and keeping min speed up a little bit, which is almost counterintuitive to that previous comment I had for Phil Hill. Uh, we're getting on throttle early is kind of detrimental to us in a lot of cases. Other times like here, it's unavoidable. We have to get on power to keep our min speed up. Otherwise, we're just going to really, really over slow, uh, even though we don't really want to you know, start our acceleration phase yet. Um, best thing I can do here is uh, get on throttle for a brief moment, start to accelerate as you uh, get to this last little turn and cut back to the right hand side. Uh, then I want to lift a little bit to get let the front tires get some grip back, get that turn in back and done. And then boom, start to accelerate out. I think you're on throttle a good bit early here, um, starting that acceleration phase, which leads to a little bit of oversteer right here. Um, nice, nice correction. Good thing uh, you know we're, we're keeping it back inside. But now we've kind of compromised the rest of the run up the S's, having to get out of it just a little bit because we have to, um, you know, we're kind of bouncing over the curbs after running a bit wide through that initial right hander, um, or you know, kind of coming 
bringing the car back to the right instead of getting a bit more left over that first curb. So, um, you know, he did a good job recovering there, but I think just in general, we can be a little bit later with that initial, uh, that big hit of throttle. When we start to accelerate out of the corner um, from that, uh, that entry, you know, we want to be rolling as much speed as possible, a little bit of throttle, and then use that, that extra lift at the end to help get the car pointed back where you need to. So thinking about it from, you know, separating your, your entry where you get in, um, enter a little bit of throttle after that in that middle phase, and then lift, turn in back to power, um, to get a little bit more, uh, grip back on the front while also keeping that min speed up in the center, um, through here, I think the rest of the S's look pretty solid, uh, just coming down into uh, sunset, which I think looks a lot better as well with how you're getting in only thing here, just being deliberate with that throttle application point want to be nice in that compression start that throttle a bit earlier um, into here um, make sure you can start to get that when you're in that compression zone uh, even if we have to get it slowed down just a little bit further um, being on throttle earlier is going to help carry that speed down the straightaway so um, just slight thing for that last turn uh, but kind of theme across um, earlier corners in the lap here a um, bit of entry speed and uh, and bit of where we place that that slow point marker too so um, I'll jump on, jump on over to, uh, to streets of Willow, but I think, uh, you know, going turn by turn, the general summary is going to be, you know, all right, we want to increase entry speed in some corners. We do that by manipulating the brakes, um, and having our slow point set, depending on if it's a, a entry speed or exit speed corner, um, in general, and then a minute, you know, getting used to manipulating weight transfer is also a big one. So just pick a few laps when you head out there next time or a few corners when you head out there next time, um, you know, take something like uh, turn one sunrise and something like. Um, Phil Hill. So opposite parts of the track, you know, give yourself some time to process mentally uh, what you want to do next lap after lap, and then go ahead with that action plan and just starting to implement and, and scoring yourself afterwards in terms of, uh, you know, how much progress we're making. Um, we could talk about plans a bit more on the uh, on intro call this weekend as well uh, tomorrow. So if you happen to watch this beforehand, I'm happy to run through some stuff too, but I'll go ahead and jump on over to Streets of Willow. Um, but yeah, best of luck and look forward to seeing some more onboards in the future too.